Welcome to this week's episode of Talk of the Town. My name is Philip Swisegood, and I am back with my good friend, Dr. Harper, from Vein Specialist of the South here in beautiful downtown Macon, Georgia. Now, if you're from Macon or if you are remotely familiar with the city of Macon, Georgia, I am sure that you have heard about the rich music heritage that is associated with our city. From Otis Redding and the Allman Brothers all the way to Jason Aldean, countless chart-topping hits have been written right here in Macon, Georgia, and it's a wonderful thing. Today, we are gonna be exploring the life and the legacy of one of our most prominent musicians from our city, and that is Otis Redding. Actually, joining us today is Justin Andrews, who is head of the Otis Redding Foundation. Justin, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you, I appreciate it. Thank now, you so much. He's real, is he? He's kind of related to Otis too, isn't he? You are you are kind of related. Can you, can you <laughs> yeah, tell us a little bit about I'm that? I'm super related. You know, <laughs> you know Otis was, um, you know, would have been my my grandfather. Um, Carla Redding Andrews is my mother. Right. Um, so you know, yeah, I have that connection as well. So yeah. it it works out at the end of the day. Right. So tell out. us a little bit about who Otis Redding is for some people that may not be super aware. Oh, man. Um, Jesus, how do you even put that in the word? How much time do you have? <laughs> you know, how do you put that in the words? I mean, Otis Redding was one of um, the most influential artists, you know, for black culture and black music, especially in the, in the 60s. Um, and even today, his music is still, you know, um, moving the culture along, pushing the culture forward. And what we're, you know, in music and film and art and, you know, and what we're doing. So it's amazing to still see that after 40 plus years of him being deceased. I mean, it's amazing to still see that. Hey, so is it true that when Otis was playing the Apollo in New York and Mick Jagger was playing, he would always refu refuse to go on stage after Otis? I've is heard that, that really a couple true? times. I don't know right. how true that is, right. but I have heard that a couple times. I have to check with my grandma on that. Okay. Right. <laughs> I have to check with her on that. <laughs> and you know, if anybody wondered how famous Otis Redding is, literally last night, he was the answer to a final question on Jeopardy. Yeah. And, that was awesome. And there was one girl who bet everything, and she got it all, and she won, and it's great for go. her. You know? There you go. You better brush up on who Otis Redding is. You better I brush love up. It. <laughs> of course, of course. You know, uh, when I, at Bank Pleasures, we do procedures, mm -hmm. patients are awake, and they request music, and right. a, a often requested artist is Otis Redding. There you and go. So we have that Otis Redding, uh, back when we were CDs, uh, uh -huh. the best Otis the Redding. The best CDs. of, yeah. So we probably listen to that. Hundreds of times, maybe a thousand times. There you go. And uh, I love it because I learned some of the words. And I thought we might sing a song, but you said that wasn't a good idea. No, no, My no, wife no, said, no, no. nah, don't do that today. I think but, people will turn off if we start like, singing. So we're, we're going to spare you that one. There you go. But, you know, the question was, what was my favorite? And, you know, I love all of them, but mm -hmm. I really love the happy song. The happy song. I, yeah. I love the happy song. Yeah. You know, the sad song sounds a little bit like the happy song, but the happy song the happy song. Got it. Yes, it so, does. It does. What, what's your favorite? My favorite is Dreams to Remember. Okay. Um, that is my favorite Otis Redding song. Um, you know, uh, my grandmother, Mrs. Redding, has writer's credit on that. That is her song, you know, so he kind of, you know, took it from her, recorded it, and, and she never knew until... She heard it on the album, so it was uh, it was neat to, for that. And this is an amazing song, amazing song. So that's on your playlist. Oh, of course, oh, right. of course. Okay, of course. cool. How many songs did Otis write and record? Do you got any number on that? Man, I can honestly not give you uh, an actual number. He has an amazing gift of, of right. writing. I'm and, always amazed you know, by people that can do that. Yeah, I mean, he could he could write, he could make melodies up in his mind, right. you know, with his lips and tapping his feet and things like that. And I mean, you know, it, it, it was amazing to see footage of him and how he works in a right. studio and, you know, commands the band right. to follow him and the band just follows him, right. you know. And now, there another goes. legend is he drove, he was the driver to take some guys out the stage. To Johnny Jenkins. Right, to Johnny Jenkins. Yeah. So they were recording. And they recorded most of the evening, and they, mm -hmm. they didn't like anything. And they you know, Otis, did Otis say, "Well, let me play." Something? Yes, Otis was the you know he was he was hounding them the whole <laughs> he day. Was driving you know. the car, right? He was. He was kind of the you know <laughs> driving the car, the chauffeur, you know, handling the luggage and yeah, things yeah. of that nature. Um, and he was just like, "Hey, I got this song, and I really want to sing this song." And they were like, you know, all right, we'll we'll see what happens. You what know, what song was it? He sang. It was "These Arms of Mine." That was that was it. "These Arms of Mine." Awesome. And from there, it was like. 
instant, you know. So that was the number one. And everybody, that was his opportunity. Yes, it was. But he had been working on the opportunity a long time. Very long right. time. Very long now, time. Now, with all those songs, there are probably some, we all know the number one hits. Of and, course, Doc of the Bay what, and What's all your those. kind of favorite of ones that people may not know, be aware of or they mm -hmm. would want to download? I have two. Um, my two are Groovin' Time. Groovin' Time, if you've never heard of it, it's an amazing, amazing song. Um, and the other song I like is Just One More Day. Um, hmm. Those are two kind of deep cuts of his that are superb. Okay, They're so amazing. download those. Yes, Just One More Day and Groovin' Time. Amazing, amazing awesome. song. Awesome, I'll have amazing to do that song. tonight. Yeah. Tell us what years roughly he was writing and performing. 62 through 67. First album dropped in 62. Um, which was the the soul album was his very first album um, and he kept going um, you know up until 67. What's so amazing to me is that's only five or six years mm -hmm. and he has had such an impact that mm -hmm. will last arguably forever right just being active for five or six years that's mm -hmm. that's crazy. It's amazing it's amazing to see that goes to show you um, you know Otis Redding's music is is timeless mm -hmm. um, you know it'll it'll never go away it'll never be out of date it'll never be old you know it, it's it all talks about current things, that things that we're going through in life as, you know, we sit here and, you know, the melodies and, you know, the soothing sounds and things of that right. nature. I mean, Otis will never go anywhere. But I mean, the amazing thing to me, he, he was a lot more than the music. Of course, he I was. Mean, he's he was a, a businessman. He's a berry breaker and the, and the racial things right. when he came along mm -hmm. and his friendships with uh, some with of the... Alan and Phil. Alan, the yeah. Phil Waldens, Walden. they mm -hmm. were great friends and really helped in his career, yeah. but he was an entrepreneur. He was. He was like, like a renaissance man. Yeah, right? I mean, he wanted to do everything. I mean, he was starting his own record label and, you know, had a a, a, um, a talent agency and, you know, he was, he, he had all kinds of plans to do restaurants. Company, didn't he? I, I don't know he, about that, the construction company. Uh, I don't know about that one. He was at a management company. Management okay. was the main thing he wanted okay. to do. He wanted to be kind of like that Quincy Jones, you know, type of deal and go out and find those artists, um, you know, that, that, you know, he liked. So that was his, did, I think, his overall goal. Did in he end. really do the first music video? I'm going to say he did the first music video because I haven't seen one before, especially <laughs> one like that one. It makes me feel good to know one thing. I know I'm alive. You know, <laughs> one like that one. That's a great music video. It is. What, what is this song? The Tramp, tramp the Music tramp. Video. Yes, yes. The and trap music video. Does so, Alba tell him he needed a haircut, really? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy enough, I'll tell you about that song. That song was actually not written by Otis and Carla Thomas. Uh -huh. um, it was a, a cover that they, that they did, and, right. um, you know, they took it and ran with it, and, of course, Otis and the ad-libs that he was using <laughs> are amazing, and, I mean, that just turned into just a, a have-fun song, yeah. so... If it's a have fun song, let's have fun in the music right. video too. So. And they did. Of course they did. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Had a ton of fun. Cool. <laughs> a ton of fun. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. yeah Thanks yeah. for sharing some of those memories. Yeah. Those people not a probably problem. may not be aware of some mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, so yeah. we're actually sitting here in the Otis Redding Foundation Correct. building. I'd love to hear a little bit about what the goal is of the Otis Redding Foundation and what you guys do. Well, the the main thing that we do is we're very involved in music and education for kids. Um, so we hold um, a number of programs for kids age ranges 5 to 18. Um, right now, as we're sitting here talking, we're in the middle of our Otis Music Camp, which we're in our 15th year of doing. Um, we have about 30, 35 um, campers that are involved in our virtual program this year, um, and they're all writing and recording all their own Per, you know, original songs. They're working on some Otis remake songs. Um, and of course they get to learn the business. So they get to learn law and copyright and marketing and intellectual properties and so on and so forth. So they get to learn those things during these two weeks of camp that we have every summer. That's great. Mm -hmm. So then you mentioned that because earlier we had talked about scholarship at Mercer Law School. Right, Would yeah. share the Yeah, the there's, a, um, there? there's a, a scholarship at um, Mercer Law School um, minority scholarship for kids that are trying to get into entertainment law. Um, you know, my grandmother, Mrs. Redding, she's been doing that for, for years and, you know, putting that in that fund and, you know, we get to see people who come out of it and, you know, so on and so forth. And it's been, it's been great to, to see. And those kids are so grateful, you know, for, for the, for that money to, to help them out. So, um, you know, we love to do that as well. So what are, 
What are y'all's dreams for the foundation? Where do you dreams, want to see that man. go? Yeah, we got a lot of it. No pun intended, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, our, our our main goal, man, is is just to have our very own Otis Redding Center for Creative Arts, where we can have all this space for us to do all of our summer programming, private lessons, um, after school programs, weekend songwriting workshops. That is what we need and what we want. You know, and we're, we're going to make happen um, in the future because we feel that, you know, every kid deserves the opportunity um, to experience some fine art in any way, shape or form. Um, and, you know, why, why not? Why leave and go somewhere else when we can offer that right here in downtown? Make it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I've always loved that, that your family give, has given back so much to the community mm -hmm. where it, you didn't have to. Right. And to make a difference in lives. Yeah. And to make the place here a better place to live, work, and play. Right. So thank you for that. Well, so, you know, so, it's, it's not a problem because right. we're really, you know, to give you another little bit of history, we're really piggybacking on my grandfather and what he was doing anyway before he passed. I mean, he was, you know, all gun ho about having a music camp and, you know, helping kids out, learning music and had the opportunity to have a small little camp out at the ranch, you know, before he passed. So we're just continuing, you know, his mission and right. continuing his legacy. And this falls right in line with it. So we're just, right. you know. So if somebody wants to help, mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are thousands of people are going to watch this video. Right. And there's people there who want, they can catch a vision to mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. So how do, how do they have, one, if they want to have somebody who might want to come to summer camp, how does that happen? Uh, well, hey. If they want to give for the, to the foundation to... Mm -hmm. Help that dream, move that dream along. What do they do? Well, you just go to our website, otisreadingfoundation.org. Um, all the information is there. Uh, you can donate. You can learn all about our programming um, and what we do. Listen to a podcast that we have that the kids do. Listen to some of the kids' songs that they create during camp. Um, and, you know, just, just see what we do in a hold in the lives that we're, we're changing around here and, and making in middle Georgia. Um, so... Just go to otisreadingfoundation.org and everything is there. Yeah. Awesome. Justin, yeah. if there's one lesson that we could learn from Otis in his life, what do you, what do you think that would be? Seize your opportunities. Hmm. Never, never fumble an opportunity. Always put your best foot forward hmm. because you may not get another opportunity to do what you want to do. So seize that moment. Take that opportunity. Grab it by the horns and, and don't have any second thoughts about it. Don't disappoint and just... Go and do it. Just do it. You know, that's that's what I take from it. <laughs> Every that's day, a great word. honestly. Yeah. You know, awesome. so just do it. Thank yeah. you for sharing. I love that. No Thank you so much. So, no Dr. Harper, we've done maybe about ten of these talk of the towns by now, and clearly people are tuning in, people are watching, and we're able to to show a lot of people what's going on around Macon, have great conversations with people yeah. like Justin. And it goes back to the vein specialist of the South principle of being involved in the community. Why is it that that's so important to you to be involved in the community? In some ways, I, I would like to say I'm a little bit like your grandfather, mm -hmm. not on the musical side, but just of giving back to the community. I think we've all been blessed with a lot mm -hmm. and, and the I always felt like I wanted to live wherever, make wherever I live better off when I'm no longer here than it was when I got here. Mm -hmm. And I think if we all did that, mm -hmm. whether it's on our uh, interpersonal relationships, mm -hmm. on our business, mm -hmm. or whatever it is we do, then then a lot of the issues we have today would not be issues anymore. Agreed. They would be real positive things for the community. So I that's agree. why we do it. And we've been blessed. Pretty much so, because of all of our patients, uh, yeah. the patients we work with, our friendships, mm -hmm. the Reddings, and many other people, and mm -hmm. it's part of kind of our the way we want to live. So, Dr. Harper, vein specialist of the South has a very unique approach to vein care. What could someone expect whenever they come to you guys with vein issues? Well, we kind of believe in treating people the way we'd want to be treated, mm -hmm. with love and respect, whether it's our employees or our patients. We want them to be surprised by the level of service. Sometimes now you're, either you wait for a long time when you go to see the doctor, or and then they don't spend much time with you. We we want to really listen to people, and not everybody comes there and needs a procedure, but they all need to be heard, mm -hmm. and uh, that's kind of different, I think. Plus, we're we want to be the best at what we do, so that we're not just doing it. So we can do a procedure, but we're doing it because we want to help the patients live a better life uh, with legs that 
feel better and look better and allow them to do the things they want with their family or their jobs or to be more confident in what they're achieving to do. That's, that's different, I think, about our process and our goals. And I would attribute a good bit of our success to that commitment. Hmm. And uh, that's why we like to interview other people, like-minded folks, <laughs> and share the message because we're doing this for Otis Reading Foundation today, but you know we're able to do that because of the platform we've been given, and mm -hmm. we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic, mm -hmm. Justin. You were great. I cannot Thank wait you. to go home and look up some of these songs. Yeah, go look them up, and definitely go gonna... listen to those kids. Go listen to those kids and see how amazing these right. kids are. And tell us one more time where we can do that. OtisReadingFoundation.org. Please go listen to these kids. See what we do, and you know, help us. You know, help these kids. That's you know, that's the overall goal of it. We will do yeah. that and we'll get the word out there. Perfect. Right. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you. And stay tuned to see where myself and Dr. Harper show up next. You never know where that might be.